In this chapter, we're going to talk about something that is near and dear to my heart. It's called blending modes. If you want to follow along, go ahead and open up in your working folder, blendingmodes101.psd. Now, I know if you're coming from the previous chapter, you heard me say how layers are just the most favorite thing in my entire life, and I'm kind of saying the same thing about blending modes. But my excuse is they are all part of the layers panel. If you look over here, I do have a layer selected. Blending modes are right here. So it says normal. Think of normal the way paint would interact in the normal world. If I take a big brush of cyan and I paint it onto a surface and it's a nice thick paint, you're not going to see anything through it. That's what I would normally expect. So what normal means is what we'd kind of think normally would happen with paint in the real world. But when you click this button, you get out of the normal world. There are so many cool things in there. An entire semester class I teach on just that one subject. I really do like blending modes. And as you're going to see in this chapter, you can get some very creative, very fun, but some very practical uses out of blending modes. Now we have a formula, and the formula is base color plus blend color equal result color. And you might hear the word value in place of the word color, that's fine. But what we're saying is a blending mode in one layer applied to another layer produces a result, which I don't know, I guess that kind of makes sense. But if you do get around people that do work with blending modes, you'll hear people talk about the base color or the base value and the blend color or the value, the result color, etc., etc. It's just the formula that we use. Now, I already have a blending mode applied to this layer right here, but it's against this neutral background. I'm going to go to that layer and I'm going to move it down on top of the base and watch what happens. I'll use my arrow keys. Isn't that cool? It's like I'm laying a piece of acetate that's colored with cyan over the image. Now if you look up here, the blending mode I'm using, and every layer can have their own, is color. Now what does color do? Well there's a formula involved in it, but very simply saying, if you have a layer that's full of color and you drop it on top of another layer, you're saying replace the colors in the base with the colors in the blend using the color blending mode. They are really cool to work with. Now let's shut this down for a minute and let's go to something else here. This is just kind of like a 101. I've got three circles. Each one's in their own layer, red, green, and blue, and they're against a black background right now. If I go to the red one, and I change. Now the two most common ones, or I should say maybe the easiest to understand, are multiply right here and screen. Multiply and screen in a sense do the opposite. For example, if you have a photograph that's too light, this would be a down and dirty way to do it, but you could make a copy of the photo in another layer, put it on top, change the top to multiply, and it would darken it. If it's too dark, you could do the opposite by putting the copy up there and doing a screen. It's a very predictable way to work. But when you're dealing with different colors, like we are right here, if I go to multiply, watch what happens. Well, we're losing the red because of the black background. And because of that, we don't see it. It looks like it cut a chunk out right there, doesn't it? And that's cool. That's fine if that's what you want to do. I want to go the other way with it, though. So let's go back to normal for a second. And watch what happens when I change that to screen. Now, in most cases, darken is almost always going to make it darker, and screen is almost always going to make it lighter. But when you start working with different values, you get some interesting results. Now, let me do the same thing to green and blue at the same time by selecting both of them and then changing to screen. Now, the results of this are mixing, like mixing colors. You've got red, green, and blue, which are the additive colors of things like your monitor, and you've got cyan, magenta, and yellow, which are subtractive colors done in print, and white in the middle, because when you mix 100% of red, green, and blue, you get white. So it's actually mixing the colors in three separate layers. Now the whole world will change if I go to white screen down here and move it underneath. Now watch what happens. I know it looks like it's on top, but it isn't, because I've changed the background it changes how screen works. If I then select these three again and go back to multiply, it brings them back, but it brings them back in a different way. 
That's why I think you can take an entire semester and work with blending modes because there are so many variables here. The permutations are almost endless. Now let's come down here. I've got a gradient. Let's go to that one right here. In gradient, let's just do a multiply in a screen. Now remember, what multiply does is it will darken, and it is against a neutral gray. So watch this. I go in here and I go into multiply. It begins to make those lighter areas that are on top of the gray go away as soon as it gets to the lighter areas. So this is a gradient from black to white. That's a 50% gray. As soon as it begins interacting with that background of 50% gray and these areas begin getting lighter than what's underneath them, they go away. So that's blending them into the background and making them, well, transparent. If I go to the opposite, which is screen, watch what happens. Well, the opposite thing happens. These will lighten up. Remember, it's always going to lighten with screen. But these, because they are actually darker than what's underneath, begin going away until it gets to the midpoint and it gets back to 100% white. Blending modes, they're just a really fun place to work. You can do some very creative, even wonky kind of things with them, but you can also achieve some very really cool effects just with that one button.